Hi everyone and welcome to Lavinia World. Today we're going to be going over five different mediums to use with stencils. My name is Monica of Heartcraft Paper. These are the stencils we're going to be using today. These are some of the newest stencils in the Lavinia World shop. They're from Altenew. So for today's tutorial, not only am I going to be using these stencils, I'm also going to be making some cards as samples. First, we have the Starbush stencil. I love the pattern on this. Next, we have the leaves and berries, very nature-like. I love this for Christmas. And finally, we have the Milky Way stencils, and that one has two sides to it that you can use. So the first medium that I'm going to be using with my stencils are Distress Oxides. Any inks, these are the standard for most card makers. Next is Gesso. Now this is a paste and I absolutely love this. We're gonna color this up and bring on some texture onto our cards. Along the way, I'll also be giving you tips on how to clean your stencils because that is gonna take some work to get some of the uh, mediums that we have going on here off. Next up, we have a reactive paint. Now this is for foil paper. So if you want to, this one is from Mink. Um, Deco foil has their own and this is a great medium to bring some shine to your crafts. I'm thinking this stencil will be perfect. Some nice foiled stars right on that card would be nice. Next, we have Nouveau Drops. Now nobody really thinks about using these for stencils, but they're actually pretty neat. So we're gonna use the same technique as we do with the gesso, nothing to worry about. Next, we have ink sprays from Dilutions. We're gonna be utilizing these to create a pattern as well. Now, you just have to be careful with these because they will dye anything it comes into contact with. So just be careful. Let's get started. Here's a neat little trick for you. We're gonna double up our tape so that the sticky side is out and then we're gonna go ahead and adhere that down to our work surface. And if you're familiar with sticking balloons to the walls, you know exactly what I'm doing. Just press down and now it will hold as you put your stencil over and you don't necessarily have to cut out any spaces because you had to color block in order to adhere your stencil. So here I'm gonna go ahead and lay down some washi tape or you can use a low tack tape, the purple painter tape, whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna try and get as close as I can to the card. I think for this one, I'm just gonna run it over the top and bottom. Because I have my card set down um, with tape underneath, it's not necessarily as important to make sure that it doesn't move because, well, it's stuck. So we're gonna start with this dress oxides or any other dyes you might want to use. This is the basic way of using a stencil in order to bring color onto your crafts. This is the easiest way. And we're gonna start blending these colors all together from top to bottom, or I might end up doing something else just depending on what I feel like. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, I'm gonna charge up my blending tool with worn lipstick first. And for this particular pattern, I'm actually gonna go diagonally. So go ahead and make sure that you blend very carefully, especially because this particular stencil has quite fine details in it. Um, so you find that sometimes you're gonna have to dab that color in or press it in versus just rolling the blender tool over it. So it really is up to you. Now this is one of my favorite blending tools. I like brushes as well, but you know, depending on how much color I want to get down and how quickly I want to work, I'll use this particular type of blending tool. But utilizing brushes for those fine details works wonders. And if you don't have any brushes, you can probably pick them up over at the Lavinia World Store because I, they do have the picket fence brushes. Now we're almost done here and I really love the color flow that this has. All right, let's lift this off and see what we have underneath. You'll want to be gentle when removing the stencil itself. 
just because if you decided to tape onto the paper, you might end up pulling some of that off. Even though you have a low tack tape, there's always the possibility. So let's take a look. Wow. I absolutely love, love, love that gentle transition of color. Awesome. Next, I have watercolor paper from Canton's. It's cold pressed. I've already taped it to the bottom of my splatter box. And you could probably already tell what I'm gonna be using next. Here I have black marble dilution dye ink and these come in sprays, which is wonderful for this particular type of project. Now you wanna be a little bit gentle with this and not spray too much. Now this is a uh, vibrant turquoise that I'm using. And as you can see, I'm kind of picking it up a little bit with the paper towel because I don't want that ink just to spread everywhere. So kind of picking it up helps. Next, I'm gonna be coming in with pink flamingo and just add some pink here and there. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find is that these will combine colors as well because if it's not dry, it will go ahead and soak up the ink in the paper itself and kind of combine. So it actually came out with kind of like a pretty purple turquoise color that came about. Using these type of inks will give it more of a grunge look. Let's go ahead and lift this off so you can see what I'm talking about. I absolutely love this. And if you are the type of person that likes a grungy look of a card or some type of craft that you're working on, this is perfect. Just make sure you're using watercolor paper. Otherwise, you will end up with ink kind of smeared everywhere. So here, I'm just bringing in some more paper, more a paper towel, I should say, um, to be able to soak that up a little bit more because I just don't want it slipping and just kind of spreading across the paper here. All right, time for a closer look. I absolutely love the look of this. All right, next up I have this Recollections paper that I purchased. This particular paper does have two sides to it. It is a shimmer, one side is satin, and the other side is more of a textured satin, so it's pretty interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and use the texture side because I want to have a distressed look to this. This is going to be for the um, reactive paint. We're gonna be putting on some foiled stars onto this particular cardstock. Now just put a little bit down, you don't need too much. And this is gonna be a little bit tacky. And this is because the foil needs to adhere to it as well as reacting with heat. So I'm using a dappling brush here in order to bring in some of that paint. I'm just gonna make sure that I do this gently. I don't wanna overdo it because what will happen is if you use too much at one time, it will bleed right on under the stencil itself. You don't want that. So you wanna make sure that it remains a little bit tacky. Now, if you want, you can leave the paint out for maybe about a minute or so, so that way it gets a little bit tacky and then you'll be good to go and start stenciling. We're ready to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and gently remove the stencil. I don't want it to smear that paint everywhere because again, it is very sticky. But as you can see here, I got quite a bit of paint in there without it seeping under the stencil itself. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to dry about five to 10 minutes. Here we are ready to pass this through my machine. I have it set to one as you can see. And this is the setting for uh, cardstock. Just set your foil in and we're good to go. Now I'm gonna speed this up so that way it just kind of flows through. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this through twice so that way we get a very good adherence of that foil paper down onto the paint. Okay, let's go ahead and lift this off and see how this turned out. I'm kind of really wondering how this is gonna look with that textured paper. And wow, it does give it kind of a grungy look because the paper is textured on one side and it's kind of like a denim, so you can see that kind of popping through these stars, but I love the shine that it gives. This, again, is another one of your mediums you can use. All right, we're moving on to the Nouveau Drops. I'm going to pick out my colors and here I again wanted to bring in that rainbow theme into this just because I also want to show that you can do a really nice gradation with this. 
you're going to use your palette for this um, just to kind of get that on and the way it's gonna work is I'm going to squeeze some of this down onto the die and just get that paste, just like a paste and just kind of get it in between all those little stars and whatnot. With this, because it's a little bit thicker, you don't have to worry about it getting underneath the stencil too much, but I really, really have to make sure that I use more of a smaller stencil just because as you can see, um, with the way that it, the, how thin it is, it, it will create a little bit of extra work if you try and cover a very large stencil with this. You know, squeezing out all that from the bottle does create kind of a bit of pain in your hand if you decide that you want to cover a large area. But you get some good gradation of colors and it's pretty easy and fast to do. Now, the one thing you're gonna wanna keep in mind is that you kinda wanna let it dry just a little bit before you actually remove the stencil. So for this, you're gonna wanna clean your stencil with nail polish remover. Let's go ahead and have a look. I absolutely love this because this comes out with so much shine. Look at the color gradation and that shine is amazing. moving on to the gesso here I'm bringing in some distress oxide and I'm putting it down on my non-stick mat now I'm gonna bring in the paste and I'm gonna go ahead and mix in the color this is one way of bringing in color mixing the, the color in before you actually put the paste down you can use acrylic ink you can use um, dyes if you have them, maybe some distress uh, ink or distress um, paints, those would work very well. Something that just has a lot of pigmentation. You're gonna see that I added quite a bit of coloring to these. I tried to get it as dark as possible, but I think it ended up too light. So later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how to do a uh, coloring dry versus just adding the color to the gesso wet. Okay, so what you wanna do is make sure that as you're getting this into the grooves that you're getting a very good coating. You don't want it to um, be necessarily too thin. You wanna make sure you get a good coverage. So I'm just gonna speed this up and work my way through it. It's got a nice little color gradation. Again, I'm following that diagonal gradation. Um, I'm not gonna use too many colors, but again, this did turn out a little bit light for my taste and I'm going to show you later on how I added more. All right, I'm down to my last color and once I get all that paste down, I'm going to go ahead and remove the stencil. I'm going to be careful though because since it's still wet, I don't want to disrupt the paste or move it anywhere. Although if you do and get a little bit smudged here and there, it's okay if you're looking for that grungy look. But I'm just gonna set it aside and let this kind of dry. Here you can see that it has quite a bit of texture. I love it. I need to start working my cards. I'm gonna start first with this glossed one and I'm going to add in my first image. This particular image is a wonderful cluster of stars that I have, and it's kind of shaped in the moon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this out onto my stamping platform, um, and then I'm gonna bring in some color. I chose to bring in some periwinkle. I figured that that would fit, and here's the color here. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp off several, several times to make sure that I get the color that I'm looking for. Here's a closer look of what I accomplished here. I totally love this color. It's perfect. Next, I'm gonna be adding in my fairy image. I chose to use a smaller image. Now, I came in with the fairy foragers, and this particular image, of course, is very small, which is why I love these so much, and it fits right into that little nook. Now, this one here is the one with the lantern. 
I love the idea of her kind of going up into the moon and lighting up all those stars. It's fantastic. I'm gonna use a simple black. Why not? I want her image to really pop out amongst all the color. And here you have it, a beautiful, simple card. This is ready to go. All I have to do now is add some font, which I did a hand font with this. I hand wrote the, le the uh, word dream. Excuse me for stuttering so much. It's kind of a long day already. But I absolutely love to make kind of a faux calligraphy. And as you can see, here it is. Moving on to our next card, I have this wonderful image called Skip and a Jump. And this is a cute little fairy jumping over a mushroom. And my history with coloring is I absolutely love to do Copic coloring. And that is one of my favorite pastimes, as a matter of fact, especially as a card maker. So this image to me was absolutely perfect. Now I just have to draw in some color and make sure that I can really make this image pop. This particular image is going to be more or less just a center focal point. And for this card here that we're making, I'm gonna be utilizing that navy blue uh, cardstock that I had with the foil paper or the foil stars on it. I think that will fit this very nicely. So we'll go ahead and get some of this coloring done. I'm going to fast forward so you can just kind of have a glimpse of how I completed this. And then from there, we'll put it together, which is actually pretty simple. I decided to go very simple with my cards this time just because I didn't want to do too, too, too much work. And of course, you know, time doesn't always allow for so much, but here you go. I used this particular die in order to cut out a circle. And this die itself comes from Memory Box. This is the Scallop Pinpoint Circles. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that onto my card front or the image. And here you go, a very simple card. And as you've noticed probably already, I'm not using sentiments because I can go ahead and reuse these. So the next card I have, I'm using Giselle. This particular image is stunning. I get the idea of a flower petal for this particular fairy. So I decided on having the skirt kind of being those petals and the upper portion of that dress being kind of like the stem. So I went in with greens. I went kind of light with this, pastels. And the reason being is because of the background that I'm using. For this particular card, I'm gonna be using that spiral stencil um, pattern. Now, this is where you come in with the dried yeso and just kind of come in and add color. Once it's dry, you can blend in color right on top. No worries. This actually works pretty well. And since you can see it's very light to begin with, adding in these colors this way gave it quite a pop. And I'm happy I came back with those colors. So for this particular card, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that image off that background by utilizing 3D foam tape. And just center it. It's not gonna have too much detail, but I came in with some crinkle binding and just went around the bottom edge of that. I'm using 1 8 inch double-sided tape to adhere that down. It doesn't require much because the seam binding is pretty light, but I do wanna create a pleating motion in order to give some lift to that binding. Next up are some cute little paper flowers that you probably find in Amazon or whatever, a craft store, and just kinda of adhere those to the bottom of my image. Now, I don't necessarily need a hot glue gun. Because it's paper, or the flowers are paper and it's going right onto the paper, you can use liquid glue and it will stay. I've gotta say that the flowers and the colors for this were absolutely stunning. It reminds me so much of spring and with her being kind of a floral fairy, I love it. Look at how beautiful that card is and all the color. Okay, so this has got to be one of my favorite cards. I wanted to go more with a distressed look on this card because of the stars that I had. Um, I did distress along the edges with some Mermaid Lagoon or was that Peacock Feather? I think it was Peacock Feather. 
I came in with Fantasy Fairy Wings from Poppy Stamps. And I'm hoping you guys really get this because it's got wings and I also have um, a little sentiment kind of going on there. So here I just took corrugated paper, tore it up to give it a distress uh, look, and then added some crinkle binding and kind of a plum. So here is my sentiment. And if you kind of see and look at that, you've got the wings of love. And I totally, totally love this card. All right, we're down to the final card. Now for this particular image, I used the Zen Butterfly. I'm not utilizing a lot of colors. I'm going two tones in each of the colors. I'm gonna do a rainbow effect as well. And that is because again, I'm using rainbow color in the background. Um, this particular image I found fascinating just because of all the detail that it has in it. Now, I would normally take my color pencils to this, but again, I love using, utilizing Copic. So I'm gonna go that route. Now, one thing that I wasn't able to include in the video because I thought I was recording, but it turned out that I wasn't, was when I added a little bit of detail to this, I used some fairy glitter on this, some fairy hugs, and I just utilized small little portions to give this particular butterfly just a little bit of pop. I think it deserved that. But look at the amount of color you can get in just simply doing two shades on each one. You know, I tried to make it rainbow and I really wanted it to kind of stand out and pop. So I'm kind of glad I went with that route. And you'll see exactly the stunning image that it has. Here you can see the glitter, I hope. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna lay down some crinkle binding. This is gonna be a very simple card again, no sentiment. Um, nothing of that nature and I can use them for whatever reason I want now that I don't have a sentiment. I'm going to glue down my butterfly and fold the wings up just a little bit. Again, that's hot glue. And then I'm going to add a simple flower. And that just about does it. As you can see here, a ton of color and it just pops. Thank you for watching Lavinia World. For more videos and tutorials like these, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification button in order to receive updates for newer videos.